Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I'll be talking about the path to innovation and banking. So right before we get started, a quick round of introduction about myself. Uh, I'm Anup Shankar. I'm a co-founder and the CTO at Chilla. Uh, Chilla, if you don't know, uh, is a multi-bank account-to-account uh, -account money transfer application. We try to be bank and switch agnostic. And the core proposition of the app is to let you transfer money to anyone in your contact book by just knowing the mobile number. We launched a couple of years back and not out of sorry. Uh, sorry about that. Mike, okay. Okay. Is it better now? Yeah, okay. So we launched a couple of years back and we were one of the first players in the industry for an app like this. Uh, jumping right in, I've structured two segments. Uh, we'll first look at uh, innovation in a regulated industry like banking, and I'll follow that up with some pointers on building within those limit uh, within those limitations, taking some examples from our own story on how we build Chiller in the initial stages. So, innovation in a regulated industry. Uh, what is the perspective that something like a bank uh, gives out from the point of view of a startup? You see this gigantic, uh, heavily regulated behemoth with a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of red tape. Uh, an institution that is quite slow to move, that is cumbersome, not really adapting, uh, adapting fast enough. And as, as a startup, you begin to wonder whether this is really a place for someone like us, uh, with all our nifty, shiny new toys, fancy algorithms, all our agility. Uh, in fact, this was one issue that I, this was one question that lingered in my mind when we first thought of getting into banking. But having worked with a uh, dozen or more of India's top banks uh, for the past three to four years, I think this doesn't give the full picture and it's, a, it's quite an unfair generalization. Uh, banks were early adopters of technology. In fact, uh, net banking was one of the first serious use cases of internet in India. And I strongly believe that that was one of the reasons why India's middle class got online in the first place, especially in the middle of the last decade. Uh, globally, too, banks where banking was one of the first sectors to face problems of scale uh, and tackle it well. <laughs> However, there has been a lull. Uh, it seems like other industries have leapfrogged banking and are better adopters of technology. They seem to understand this, and off late at least, uh, they are more responsive to startups and the fresh perspectives that they bring in. But then again, banking is still a very traditional industry and it is entangled in regulations and is very sensitive to stuff like uh, user privacy, data management, security, etc. And as a startup to innovate in this space, it's a very fine line that you have to thread, uh, balancing that innovation and also those sensitive and keeping those sensitivities in mind. So how do you build within those limitations? The best example that I can give you is how we build Chiller in early stages. Uh, the mistakes that we made, the lessons that we learned, and the things that we got right. Mm -hmm. now, like any startup, uh, we started we started up striving to solve a real-world problem. And this real-world problem was something very personal, uh, personal to us. And I'm sure that a lot of you guys would have also faced this. How do you settle money between friends? Uh, for example, you go out for lunch, uh, someone in the group pays. Now, how does he recuperate all the, all the expenses that he had? Uh, people might forget their wallets intentionally, unintentionally. They may not have changed. A uh, lot of issues, it's always difficult. Uh, the next thing you would do is probably log this down on a piece of paper or evolve, that evolved into a spreadsheet and then probably use Splitwise to do it. But what happens later? Uh, it still lays, lies around there. You just know that you owe somebody 50 bucks, but you never end up paying it. The solution was obviously to go digital. But remember, this was three to four years ago. There was no UPI. Uh, India's digital economy was not that mature. Demonetization was still not trending yet. Uh, and uh, so obviously, we had to compete against cash. Uh, and to do that, what it meant was it had to be, the, our solution had to be like really quick, as convenient as someone taking out money from the and paying someone else. Uh, and perhaps more secure and definitely more accountable. Uh, so we decided to experiment. The first thought that came across the lines was obviously, uh, 
how do you identify a person? So the global unique identifier that everyone has is a mobile number. So that was the obvious route to go. And with that set, we had three paths to take. The first was a wallet route. Probably the easiest route to take. Uh, but our philosophy was that we wanted our solution to be modeled as to cash as possible. And wallet really didn't cut it. Uh, what, what, what we really needed is something where all the participants could settle between their bank accounts. It does very well now, but again, there was no UPI then. And wallet was not something that we could try. Second question, the second option was creating a custom financial switch by ourselves. So being an engineer, this was something that excited me a lot. But the thing is, it's not, some, it's not a problem that three or four of us could sit around a table with our MacBooks and solve overnight. So that got chucked. Third obvious was to ride on existing infra. And like other people have said, IMPS was already there. It was already three to four years old by that time. It was quite innovative for its time. It had all our all the check, right checkboxes ticked for us. It was instant. It was based on mobile numbers. Uh, it was really secure. And it was mature enough that 60 to 70 banks are already connected to it. Uh, but it had two lagging problems. The first one was that user experience was quite bad. Uh, not, not a lot of people have even heard of IMPS at that point, apart from people working in the industry. No. Uh, and, but in the end, this ended up as more of an opportunity rather than a challenge for us. Uh, the second problem was a bit more critical. Uh, so IMPS being a financial switch, uh, you could only connect to it if you were a bank uh, or you had to partner with the bank. The same story with UPI today. Uh, so before, before I get into how we tackle that problem, this is what we had envisaged Chiller to be at that point in time, and more of, this is more or less true even now. So how do you transfer money from one person to the other? Uh, you tell your bank that you want to transfer X, Y, Z. Uh, the bank authenticates you somehow. It passes on that information to the switch, and it's the responsibility of the switch to go to the beneficiary bank, give, pass on the debit instructions, and finally, the beneficiary gets paid. So what role do we play here? So we are, we are encompassing, or we are trying to wrap around this whole process, and are more concerned with the finer details here. Uh, things like the UI, we need to make the app look, or the whole process look beautiful. UX provide a great user experience. And the third was our, one of our core USPs, number mapping. So at that time, to do a P2P transfer, you needed to know a lot of numbers. Account numbers, IFC codes, MMIDs, whatnot. A lot of crypt crypt cryptic strings. And what we tried to do was hide away all this under the hood, uh, remove all the ugliness, and give the user a very seamless experience. And of course, after that, to engage the user, we needed to provide things, value adds like uh, payments, bill payments, pre charges, etc. Now, coming back to the pain point, of integrating with a bank. Uh, we did a big mistake. We just jumped into the whole process. We didn't really know what sort of game we were getting into. We didn't know the regulations well. Uh, we were not sure of what rules we had to play, what the legality of our whole solution itself was. And we failed quite miserably convincing the banks. Quickly realized that this was not, that was going to be a huge strain on time and resources. And we had to be really prepared with regulations before we go back to a bank. Now, since this was going to take time, what do we do in the meantime? We just couldn't, we couldn't afford uh, being idle. So luckily, I am something called as, uh, some, a system that could run on SMS, which meant that we didn't need to partner with any bank. So with all the parameters that were not under control out of the equation, we could do something uh, with, without too much external dependencies. And that's what we went ahead and built. So we built an app uh, on SMS. Obviously, this was not a very robust solution, and this was not something that we could uh, release out to the public. But it helped our, uh, helped our purposes for a closed-loop MVP. So we gathered around a network of uh, friends and colleagues, and we had around 200 daily, uh, users using our app daily, providing us a stream very valuable feedback. This, I think, was one of the best decisions that we took. Um, because the amount of feedback that we got, and very early on, 
was extremely helpful in validating the product one, providing us a lot of clarity on uh, what had to be done and what our product really wanted to be. And by that time, uh, we had a chance to sit with the banks again. We knew the questions, the right questions to ask. And more importantly, we knew the right answers to the questions that the banks posed us. But this is where we had failed miserably earlier. This also helped us getting, in getting the right integration. And we ended up getting bagging the, one of the biggest banks in India at that point, HDFC Bank. And the whole process helped us ship something quickly and ship something that was uh, useful for the bank, uh, useful for a user. So what are the key takeaways from all of this? Uh, the first thing I would say is working with a bank, be resourceful. Because time may not really be your companion. Uh, there will be a lot of corners to cut. Uh, you need to cut those corners. Just be aware of uh, what the risk versus uh, benefit ratio is. You also need to have a lot of clarity before you talk to banks. Uh, be very clear on your head. Don't think that clarity will come on the go and you'll be able to answer everything during a discussion. Uh, be very, very clear. Third is providing value. So this is true with in any industry. Oh. And value needn't financial benefit. You tend to think that, especially when you're working with a bank, but there are a lot of areas where innovation is possible, uh, which may not have any direct financial benefits. Things like customer experience, that was probably where we were in, uh, or things like uh, improving their processes, cutting costs, etc. Fourth and the most important thing, I guess, uh, which most startups don't get right, uh, is not listening to banking or banking professionals as partners. Uh, we generally have this arrogant attitude that we know it all and we know our solution so well. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, uh, they have been around in the industry for quite some time. And they probably know banking way better than you guys do. Uh, so it's good to uh, he hear out their suggestions adapt, iterate, and build a good product. So before I end, uh, there is this one important point again I had to make. Uh, innovation in banking is not just about cool technology. Yes, cool technology helps, but uh, the real innovation is how you use the cook, how you implement those technologies that you have, and how you work your way around the regulations, the legalities that are involved. Uh, don't build castles in air. Uh, be grounded, be aware, and I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to uh, something great. And the whole space is still open for a lot of disruption and innovation. Yeah, those are my slides. I'll take some questions. Thank you, Anu. Uh, we'll take a few questions. I think we have time for about five minutes for questions. Uh, anybody? Uh, who has questions for what Anup just spoke about? Yeah, we have a question here. Could you just introduce yourself also, please, before you ask the question? Uh, hello, uh, my name is Sridham. I work in a razor pay. So I've used Chiller before because phone pen didn't have an iOS app. So using Chiller, using a phone number, I was able to exchange my I, I was able to exchange money with with a friend of mine. And with UPI also I can do that. But from a product perspective, how do you plan to leverage UPI in, in Chiller? Like I said initially, so we 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 want to be switching. So switch here is IMPS or UPI. The method doesn't matter too much. Uh, so we, we are live on UPI now, actually. So we, we, we run a hybrid model. Some of the transactions go through IMPS, some go through UPI. So it, it's a win-win for us also. You didn't, you, the advantage is you don't need to partner with all those. So UPI gives us an advantage that. Yeah, uh, any other questions? No, sure, go ahead. Uh, hello, I'm Sanjana. Uh, so these days, even the individual banking apps provide IMPS transfer. Uh, okay. So what is the extra value add that I'm getting to use uh, Chiller app? One of the questions that the banks used to ask. Uh, 
the thing is, a bank's mobile app needs to do a lot of things. It needs to do everything a bank can do for a consumer, which includes probably even requesting for checkbooks. So it's always this transfer, this transfer section, the P2P transfer section gets hidden under a lot of menus, a lot of layers. It's very hard to use a mobile banking app just to do that. You can try. I mean, all of, almost all the major banks' apps, it's quite difficult to actually just send money. And, and, and in our case, you just need the mobile number. You don't need anything else. That's the value at that point. OK. Uh, oh, yeah. Here's a question. Uh, hi, my name is Kunal. Uh, I write for Economic Times. Uh, can, can you just give some insights of uh, you know, the user base itself for Chiller and how deep has the usage actually gone, uh, given that it's still very nascent in the industry? Uh, but still, uh, I mean, any use cases that are, uh, you know, that surprised you also? Uh, use cases that surprised us? Okay, so one story. Uh, so this was very early. So I think probably two months after we uh, launched with HDFC. Uh, just keeping on getting money from uh, every day, from 10 to 12 accounts. Uh, not every day, every week, I guess. From 10 to 12 same accounts. And it was all small payments. So we didn't, we couldn't figure out because we hadn't uh, promoted this as a merchant app, or it was not a merchant; it was some guy using it. It turned out to be a milkman in Pune uh, who was <laughs> getting paid through Chilla. So that was something like we never, never really realized that. Uh, at least in the beginning, we thought our target uh, market would be people in the 20 to 30 year old range uh, who just had their salary accounts. So that was our target market, but. Uh, this was a very interesting story that we had very early, but I can't give you real numbers on. Yeah, I would say around 60 to 65 percent are still cities, but we do have a market in the rural areas too. Yeah, oh, sorry. No. Sorry, uh, the question or the both? Yeah. Uh, the question was uh, what was the split between urban and rural? Uh, in, in our user base, and what I answered was around 60 to 40 percent. That's the split. Uh, could you just hold the mic closer? And just, yeah, just, just repeat that last point. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm very bad with mics, sorry. Uh, so the split was 60 is to 40, urban versus rural, approximately. Okay. Uh, do we have any other questions? Oh, I have one last question, if you yeah. don't mind. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're, banking is supposed to be a fairly conservative industry. And um, I mean, I, I saw how you, you had the difficulty in trying to get through. Uh, but do you think that um, mindset should change? Or do you think people developing the app should learn to how to deal with a conservative industry? Both should change. Okay. But mindset is not something that can change overnight. Right. And us be wanting to innovate faster, I think it's easier for us to make some adjustments yeah. and okay. work on that. Uh, if we don't have any other questions, I think we shall break off here for uh, tea break. Uh, thank you, everyone. Please give a round of applause to Anu.